what is going to be the driving force to keep agriculture healthy? It's going to be well, whole people who have the skills to adapt, create solutions, and share deep feeling and passion around what is truly important to them and why. Hi, friend. Welcome to Gather and Growth, a show created for passionate, growth-focused, rural women like you. From mindset work and building strong habits to exploring the unique joys and challenges of living rural, this is a show to leave you feeling joyful, inspired, and a little less alone. Together, we're on a journey of reaching for the most confident, healthy, and authentic version of ourselves, and I'm forever grateful to have you by my side. Whether you're currently running on a back road, shuffling kids to town, hopping along for a tractor ride, or three loads deep into folding laundry, grab yourself a nice coffee and let's dive in. Hey friend, welcome back to Gather and Growth. Today, I am proud to share part two of my conversation around navigating farm transitions with Elaine. If you haven't already, be sure to pop back to catch up on all of the wisdom that she shared in part one. And if there's anything in either episode that you find helpful, I invite you to share these conversations with a friend or even pass along to someone within your own family as a way to open the door to talking about the farm transition process. Enjoy. So when it comes to aligning values or even identifying what your values are, then how do different generations on the farm or even different families on the farm have that conversation together? Because I can think of a couple of different examples where maybe one family has identified, you know what, like we are not going to be working all hours of the day. We prioritize being present. And then another family maybe hasn't considered that or has a different mentality. And then the parents are, well, we've always done it this way. The expectations are this. So how do you bring everyone together and have that conversation? I know you talk about like the hurt feelings and the Mm -hmm. assumptions and, you know, that pents up over so long before there's an explosion or anger. Uh, Tension or pinch points, we call them. Exactly. I have my Beanie Baby Ox here. If anyone listens to this and sees Beanie Baby Ox at a flea market, buy them for me and mail them. I have two of them in case I lose one. But I have been carrying this little guy around for 20 years. He's my talking stick. So how do you have these conversations? The thing is, Emily, is that I know a family that this is to be true because the woman who, who is the mom in one case with the daughters and the kids in this family, the son doesn't show up for work nearly as often as the father wants him to. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that requires honesty and transparency and say, I'm not going to. I'm going to tuck my children into bed and read them stories. And then maybe I will come out and do another two hours of field work or not, right? But again, I call it managing expectations. And For some families, those conversations will not happen unless they are facilitated by an outside objective third party who's not emotionally attached to the outcome. And the reason I'm holding up this Beanie Baby Bull is when you hold this talking stick, you get to talk uninterrupted. And then you can say who wants the bull or who wants the talking stick. And I had this happen to me personally where my son and daughter-in-law were not happy with me and on, on how I was spending my time taking care of other people's children. And I said, whoa, stop right now. And I ran to my house, got my laptop and my Google calendar, came back and I said, okay, let's block time. Let's Mm -hmm. talk about expectations. And I said, you never told me you were feeling this way because I had no idea. And I said, plus, I don't think you're actually totally right because you never asked I'm always open to a conversation about whether or not your expectation is workable for me or not. And I'm pretty accommodating because I love being a grandma, but at some point I also need to have time with my friends and I also need to have time with other farm women and other young moms who I also want to encourage because that's who I am. I am empathetic and I'm an encourager and I want to be an older woman in agriculture who is a mentor to whoever wants to have that journey. Uh, with me. So your question was, what if the values within the same family dynamic, say the grandfather or the, or the uncles or the brothers or the cousins is different? Here's the saying, different is not wrong. It's just different. And you can say, I wish that I could come back out to the field to help you, but I'm not going to, because I've made a promise to my family to be present for them tonight or whatever. And 
I think there's a book written about how you can express wishes to children when children are being demanding. And quite frankly, Emily, there are some 70 year olds acting like four year olds because they have a very autocratic way of leadership and it's their way or the highway. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that their behavior is crushing the hopes and dreams of the very people that they want to fulfill their dream of having that farm go to the next generation happily. Mm, I think that's such a good point is, you know, I, I think every, I, I can't say everyone, but so many people's intention is, oh, I want to, I want to see this move forward. I want to pass on the legacy. I want my great grandchildren to do this. But in that same breath are ultimately like holding back any progress towards that actually mm. happening or making decisions that directly put the next generation or the generation after that in really hard situations, financially, mentally, emotionally, whatnot. I think we will have to do a reset and have a whole other podcast about <laughs> how to live well financially on farms in 2023. Mm -hmm. Because another discussion, the map that I use and this will be helpful to listeners as well. I have a map in my head when I'm talking to people, especially initially about farm transition, income streams, housing, fairness. You figure out those three questions. Do you have enough to live on? And are you being well compensated? Parents, founders, grandparents, and next gen, where is everybody going to live? My daughter-in-law didn't want my house. She saved me $700,000. Thank you, daughter-in-law. So I didn't have to move. And I like, I, I've lived in this house for 40 years and taken good care of it and has everything we need. She got to have a new house. Great. Fairness. And how, what does that mean to, to have fair? And fairness is not just about money. Fairness is also about freedom and time. Is it fair that the bachelor brother works 120 hours, but the, the brother with the two kids only will put in 60? Well, it depends about the behavior that you accept. It also depends of whether you're going to work, really put your nose to the ground during seeding and harvest during the really busy times, but then you're going to take the gas, you know, the pedal off the gas, whatever, when you have time to have more, more family time and that you know that this isn't going to last forever. But the problem, Emily, in some families, they don't pay attention and it mm -hmm. does last forever because there's never any rhythm to pulling back, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they get so entrenched or entrained in, well, we have to work or, or we can't talk because talk doesn't get the work done. Well, that's not wise. Good planners are very efficient at working smarter, not harder. Just think of the, all the women listening to this who feel that their well is full. My well went dry yesterday because I spent too much water on my hedges and things while I was listening to your podcast and just <laughs> trimming trees. And I even coached some guy who was having marriage problems. He's a friend of mine. And I go to take a shower after I'd been out sweating and I, my head is soaking wet with sweat and the well is dry. <laughs> so what does my loving husband do? He goes and gets the water tanker and he fills up the well and he says, just be easy on. And I had it, I had the water hooked up to the wrong well too, because we have another well on our farm, but I have to use longer hose. <laughs> Lesson learned, right? It's a very good word picture. So as you listen to this podcast with us, what are you doing intentionally this summer to fill up your well? Mm -hmm. And the only don't, it's not, don't depend on other people to fill that up. What do you need to fill yourself up? what you need in your relationships and your spouse may not be the one who can only do the filling and pay attention to that. I think that's a good metaphor for us where we're at right now in this conversation. Mm. I 100% agree. In my own experience, you know, I, I use a similar metaphor of you're a tall glass of water. And if you're constantly pouring into all these cups, your cup is empty. And even if you refill it, sometimes it's always going to be perpetually empty. But if you, you know, imagine that tall glass of water and bring your cups in closer and are constantly filling into yourself first, the same water is going to overflow into all these cups without depleting you in the process. So, right. Over the past year, I know you have heard me talking about masterminds. I bet you're thinking, hmm, that sounds kind of cool, but what is a mastermind? And is this even for me? Let me break it down for you. 
Simply put, my masterminds are groups of rural women who come together to support each other in achieving their goals. It's like having a personal board of directors or cheerleaders who are there to help you succeed. Here's how it works. Our mastermind groups are filled with six to seven rural women, small town doers and dreamers, entrepreneurs, or women in agriculture who are invested in their personal and professional growth. We meet bi-weekly, which is every other week, for two hours throughout the 16-week session. During these meetings, each member has the opportunity to share their goals, challenges, and successes. The other members then offer feedback, advice, and support to help them overcome any obstacles and stay on track. This session, I have mastermind groups that focus on overall personal and professional growth, accountability, and goal setting, along with targeted groups for specific needs such as new moms or emerging entrepreneurs. One of the cool things about a mastermind group is that it gives you access to other women who share similar interests, lifestyles, and goals. You'll have the opportunity to connect with other rural women who are on a similar journey, which can be incredibly inspiring and so motivating. Plus, being part of a mastermind group helps you develop new skills, learn from others, and gain new perspectives on your goals and challenges. It's like having a whole team of advisors who are invested in your success and genuinely want to see you win. You heard me right. No drama, no competition, 1000% rural women supporting rural women with big dreams. My next session, the last of 2023, will kick off the last week in July and registration is opening soon. Spots are extremely limited, so be sure to click the link in today's show notes to get on the wait list. But there's another thing that you brought up that I'd love for you to touch on is that concept of a fairness or equality. And I think this comes up a lot with, you know, multiple siblings in a generation and one stays and then the others move away and then they have families. And then there gets to the point where another generation is ready to pass. So there's land to buy. And how do we do this? How do you coach people through that conversation? Not even just for the stakeholders who are physically present on the farm, but for the people who are, you know, financially, emotionally entangled in it, but physically removed and not a part of the operation anymore. Right. And that was the question poised to me way back in 2017. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Farm Family Coach, all you have to Google is Farm Family Coach and Finding Fairness in Farm Transition. And I've used the definition, fairness is helping everyone be successful because the problem is, is with when I mention income streams, is if the parents have depended on the assets of the farm to fund their retirement or their reinvention, as I call it, as they age in place, then you have to have liquidity from the farm. But if they've been wise and they've built up personal wealth or what we call the personal wealth bubble, Emily, then they have money or places to draw on to satisfy their non-farm heirs. And there's a company here in Canada called 337, the word seven written out, .ca, and you can go to that website. But they use a tool which is a form of life insurance to get people in a tax-free zone to cascade the wealth to the next generation to farm and non-farm. So this is quite often, it's about money. It's about a financial conversation. It's also about how reasonable the expectations are. And so if, if the value of the family is to keep the farm business intact, then the other non-farm heirs will celebrate that. And then the other problem in our family, my brother and I, one of my brothers, I have two brothers, a farming brother, and I'll call him my property development brother. My property development brother and I have always been wealthier than our parents. So on July 21st of 1998, when we sat down for our estate uh, transition planning meeting with my farming parents from the farm near Winnipeg, I quite clearly said, I expect nothing from your estate. And my other brother said, I expect nothing from your estate. My non-farm sister did have an expectation of my mom, which she was clear about. And my mom wanted her to have some land, which she did give her. And my farming brother got the farming shares. Unfortunately, my mother died of an asthma attack six weeks later, Emily, and I Mm -hmm. in in that season. So I've been with my mom died at 65 Mm -hmm. of an asthma attack, which took her two weeks to die. But I was with her as she was dying. 
All of this to say is that we can have all kinds of reasons for wanting something. So it also comes down to what does money mean to you? And for some non-farm heirs in, and I'm thinking of these farms in Iowa or whatever, where the ground is now 14000 or $20,000 mm-hmm. an acre, what money means to these young people who grew up on farms in Iowa or Illinois or Indiana or any of the I states is it means love. So if you don't give me money, that means you didn't love me. But the thing is, did I give you a college education at Iowa State? Yeah, well, that's worth $200,000. Did we help you along the way? Yes. Have we helped you with, you know, so then you get into this tit to tat accounting, which mm-hmm. is never helpful. And so it's a it's a bigger conversation. And, and why I totally have wiped the word equal from my vocabulary about this discussion is there is a sense of fairness. Do you feel that you've been treated well? And then the other hard question is, what do you as farming founder parents owe your children? Mm. And some parents will say, I have four children. They each get exactly the same. And that is an old school European approach to, I have four people in my family. My four heirs get exactly the same. That's not workable anymore because that $15 million of land that you need to stay together to keep this farm business generating wealth to the next generation is never going to be sold. So it's, it's off the table. It's not part of the equation, but the non-farm heirs are fearful that the farming kid is going to flip the farm and walk away with 15 million. And that the Emily that has happened, Mm -hmm. but there are, there's a thing called a poison pill that a lawyer can put in place to make sure that if a farm kid does flip the land within five years, 10 years, 15 years, or 20, there's a prorated formula of cash and money that goes to all the kids. So this finding fairness and farm transition question, this is a whole hour presentation, (laughs) but here's the key point. We need financial transparency. We need to talk about money as a form of energy, not as a form of power. Because money gives us different things and money means different things. Money to me is the ability to service debt, be generous. And I have no debt at the moment. I'm going to have more debt next week when we build the new shed. But, you know, (laughs) I, I, I I can be a little bit light about that because of my age and stage. But my son has a huge amount of land debt still because our neighbors got divorced. Four farms that touch us have all been divorced. Four. Wow. Right. And so... Financial transparency. Next one is intention. My intention is to have family harmony. My son is a multimillionaire. My daughter is not, and she struggles with a mental health illness that doesn't allow her to have full-time work. Is my daughter well taken care of? Yes. Does she have a trust in place for when I pass and my husband pass? Yes. Does she understand why her brother has more than she? Yes. Is she unhappy? No because her needs are being met. And so that's why I think this conversation is so dynamic. When you talk about intention, is your intention to keep the farm business intact? Yes. And you'll have farm heirs and non-farm heirs that celebrate that. And you'll have other farm heirs who say, I deserve to get a quarter of this farm. And if you don't give me what you want, I'm taking you to court. Yeah. Well, how's that working for family, family harmony? It's not. That yeah. family tree is now broken fragmented and never to be mended again because of greed and entitlement. And Emily, I have a whole thing for sale, $67, I think on my website on greed and entitlement, because I'm kind of like the yellow canary of agriculture. I will talk about things or sound the alarm bells about things that people have not put words to. So Mm -hmm. financial transparency, your intentions about what you want for the farm, the family, And then your attitude towards money, just what I said, no matter how much you give some people, it's never enough. I was in a family meeting once where the young man said, you know, dad, this would be so much better if you would just up and die. And then I could have my (laughs) $500,000. He actually said that in front of his mother, who of course, instantly burst into tears and went for the Kleenex box. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece of fairness is what do you do with the roles and rebels and the people who, no matter what you do, it's never enough. And for those children, you have to let them go and say, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but we've explained our reasons. And the best way to navigate this is to get your agreements in place while you're alive. 
-hmm. And the other best way is to give gifts with a warm hand, not a cold one, because no one can fight granny when she can talk back to you. (laughs) She can say, I'm sorry that you don't like what I've done, but I've done this because this is the young man who's taken care of me for the last 20 years. And this is the man and his wife and and the woman agronomist, and she's going to come and and farm here because she and I have decided that she's going to be the good steward of this land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear when people are alive, why they make certain decisions, and then they can explain it. Yeah. And the unfortunate thing is when people, like you said, in the beginning of the conversation, procrastinate that or don't want to make a decision or don't want to hurt feelings. So then that passing happens. And then everyone else is standing around looking at each other like, okay, now we have to figure out what to do. And so not only are emotions high, there's a lot on the table, but now we're trying to make all of these decisions. It's, it's a lot. Well, and I I have to tell you, Emily, with my in-law family, my mother-in-law, her name is Margaret Fraze. We are on her farm. She bought this farm in 1945 from her father when she married Abe in 1945. So she was the true farmer of the relationship, which is interesting, but she was raised by a wicked stepmother. So at Christmas time, if one kid was getting a thousand dollars to help out with a renovation somewhere, every kid got a thousand dollars. And so when we bought this farm in 1992 from my husband's parents, which you could buy a farm in those days, now you can't. Anyway, they gave three quarters of land to Wes's sisters while they were in their 30. Could you imagine if I gave you $70,000 tomorrow? That was the value of the quarters that they each received. And then we, of course, as the farm kids, got first right of refusal. So it was win-win. And do we still get Christmas together and Thanksgiving and happily see each other? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's no one way to do the fairness thing. But what you need to do is to create solutions and talk to each other about how does this work for you? And why are you doing it this way? And it's best to do that with people who have a lot of experience and street cred of understanding how families have creatively found fairness. And so with this tool that I'm talking with 33.7 called the Tax-Free Zone, it's an an insurance tool, but some corporations do have the cash flow to do it. And they found that as a way to keep the wealth cascading to all of the family members. And as a home economist, talking about money is not a big deal for me. Money is just a form of energy but a yeah. lot of people need to pay attention how they're using it and what it means to them. I think we're at a really interesting point in agriculture. Some of these pivotal decisions at the family level are going to impact the way the industry moves forward. Mm-hmm. So what do you see as the biggest opportunities and also pain points as generations are starting to transition to preserve what we have or I I don't know, I guess in relation to what the future of agriculture looks like. I think the biggest opportunity is to get really good at communication because so many agricultural families that reach out to me say, Elaine, we're terrible communicators. We don't do conflict well. So get better, get better at asking more powerful questions, get better at inviting people into your space who can help you do strategic thinking and can help you see creative solutions. And when I look at conflict resolution, Emily, We have a conflict dynamic profile on my website that people can get for just $35 US, $55 Canadian. And it helps you see the power around creating solutions, expressing emotions, reaching out, adapting, putting yourself in the other person's shoes. So the the opportunity for agriculture is to question, why do we think this is a good idea? And what what are the benefits of doing it this way? And our accountant, every year that we meet with her, she gives us the benchmarks and shows us how our farm is relative to the database of the accounting firm. And we're in the top 4%. But we have lots of room to get better on how we pay attention to the numbers, which we are doing now with better systems and better inventory. But it's also the culture. Mm -hmm. So if you have a culture where people like each other, there's no drama around conflict, you're not using energy for conflict. You're using energy for amazing management. Mm -hmm. And that to me should be obvious to everyone listening to this because I say distracted management is sucking the energy out of your farm. Mm. And what's your return on energy, human energy? What's the return for being 
a whole, well, healthy person giving agriculture your best game every day. And that, to me, is the culture of what you believe to be true, how you behave with each other, and as we've been talking about, how you make decisions. Hey friends, I'm going to be totally honest. In the past four months, my habits have gone out the window. Pregnancy be humbling like that sometimes. But now that I'm starting to feel like a functional human again, I am so ready to get back to the things that I know make me feel physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy and strong, which is why I am jumping into a new round of You Do You 82. You Do You 82 is a habit challenge where you get to choose six habits to intentionally build or break through the lens of progress over perfection for 82 days. This challenge is 1000% free and anyone can start anytime. However, I know it's always more fun when we do something like this together. I'm jumping in within the next couple of weeks and I think you should too. If you are ready to bring some intentionality into your life and truly take care of you throughout this summer, I invite you to join us. Tap the link in today's show notes to download your free Journey Through You Do You 82 workbook today. Whether or not you've done this before or anything like it, I believe that any time is a good time to invest in yourself. There's no need to compare yourself to where you've been, where you wish to be, or what anyone else around you is doing. This is for you exactly where you're at today. Again, you're going to tap the link in today's show notes. Head to youdou82.com to get started. I am so ready. Let's do this. I've had a a friend who's very well integrated into agricultural sales and marketing. And he went to a different occupation because his frustration when coaching and working with farmers is that they did not respect time, the Mm -hmm. power of time. And they did not respect the power of thinking about what could truly be, you know, the pressure in agriculture is going to be financial. We have young farmers like my son who hasn't ever yet had a really bad year. And those years will come again. High input costs. My grain cart that used to cost $28,000, they want me to buy a new one for $250,000. I said, how can you 10X the price of a grain cart? Well, the second one's probably a little bit bigger, but still 10Xing a piece of machinery is really not fun. Yeah. Yeah. So what is what is going to be the driving force to keep agriculture healthy? It's going to be well, whole people who have the skills to adapt, create solutions, and share deep feeling and passion around what is truly important to them and why. There's the mic drop right there. (laughs) So good. So one question I asked every guest who comes on the show is, Elaine, what does personal growth mean to you in this season of life? Personal growth to me is lifelong learning. I go back to my Strength Finder 2.0 test whatever assessment that I did way back 20 years ago when I graduated from the Hudson Institute of Santa Barbara, I am wired for communication, empathy, lifelong learning, positivity, and woo. And woo is winning others over. And that's as a coach, what I have to do very quickly, someone is pouring their deepest heart, longing and desires to me. And so personal growth for me is showing up as the best version of me with all of the experiences and losses and journeys that I've had in my life to help use my life as an encouragement to other people that you never stop learning, you can keep growing. And the positivity is I always know there's hope because it's your farm, it's your family, and you can go out there and make really good choices to have an amazing life. So wonderful. I know right before we hopped on the call, um, you had mentioned you have something new in the works this fall. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? I've been percolating on how I can extend my influence and impact because I have, I've worked in Australia and I've also got people in Ireland and South Africa and Norway that follow my work. And so the idea that I have is to build community through the farm family harmony journey. And I'm creating a membership site that will come out on October 19th. So if people want to get more information, all they have to do is go to farmfamilycoach.com 
go on my Instagram or my TikTok and let me know at Farm Family Coach and I'll put you on the wait list. And it's a way for me to have coaching opportunities, masterminds, and uh, help unpack that journey, that map of income streams and fairness and housing, all the things that I've been writing now. I have five books, Emily, over 28 years of writing. So there's a lot of content out there and I want to make it easy for people. I'll be using a platform called Searchy. It'll be a very easy platform to navigate and it'll make your life easier if you have a question for me to find out the answers and to also build community with other farmers. So I'm excited to see what happens. It's a journey that I don't know how it's going to unfold because the people who join me in October will help me create it the way that makes it the most meaningful for them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to invite you to be a podcast guest someday too, because my podcast will be coming out at the end of June. So it's called the Farm Family Harmony Podcast. I've always wanted to have my own radio show. Yes. And someone told me I have a voice like Sheila Rogers, who's famous in the CBC world in Canada. But I, I really want to say thank you for this opportunity. The podcasts that I've been on have been amazing. And I I think it's fabulous for agriculture to be able to curate Mm -hmm. and be very clear about what goes into their ears because what goes into our ears affects our minds. And there's two things in this world that'll affect you. It's the people you meet and the books you read. But I think that quote now has to be changed (laughs) and the podcasts you listen to. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And the people you follow and all all of the above. I think that's, there's so much truth to that. What we internalize through the media that we consume and the relationships that we have and what we think on Mm -hmm. it all affects our mindset which trickles into every single part of life and the most transformational thing i've done in my own life is really taking inventory of of what that looks like and who i'm surrounding myself with and what voices i'm i'm taking into consideration and allowing myself to ask the hard questions and like you said What do you want your life to look like? What what could be possible? Because anything is possible. And I want everyone listening to this podcast to have the life they've always wanted. That would be awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. Take care. Have I told you today how much I appreciate you? I'd like to imagine this was a meaningful backyard patio kind of chat between friends sipping LaCroix at sunset. If you enjoyed today's show, please take a screenshot to share or forward this episode to a friend. You can also find me at Emily Rushel over on social to continue the conversation. It's truly a joy to hear what tidbits and takeaways made an impact on your day. As always, all links and resources mentioned in today's episode can be found in the show notes listed below or over at emilyrushell.com. Special thanks to my podcast manager, Jill Carr, for the time and love she puts into producing gathering growth for this community. What a blessing it is to be on this personal growth journey together. Forever grateful for you.